song is in the key of F, but the um, the chord voicings all happen in D shaped, A shaped, B minor, E minor, and G shaped chords. So what he does to get those sounds is capos on the third fret right here. Uh, and even though our frettings are actually taking place on the fifth fret and sixth frets respectively in the song, I'm going to pretend since we're capo that this is the nut and I'm going to refer to these frets as second frets and third frets uh, in the region or in the way that typically your D, A, E minors, Bs, and G chords would be falling. Uh, the sound that comes out of most of these chords is going to rely on a droning first string, high E string, that is droning throughout most of these chords that usually in a D chord or a G chord you don't have this high E that drones, but Ryan Adams chooses to leave it open during most of his frettings. Sometimes he'll fret it down like at the beginning of the D chords with uh, a ring finger, uh, I'm sorry, a middle finger on the second fret there of the high E string, but usually the string is open and we hear this drone throughout all of our chords. Alright, so here's how we make these chords. You're going to use your pointer finger on the third string second fret and ring finger on the second string third fret to make your D chord. To make the A chord, um, instead of moving to the uh, fourth string second fret with his first finger the way that it would make sense to me, he does something that is not very intuitive. Um, in my mind, he moves instead with his second finger to the fourth string second fret, leaving these other fingers that we made with our D still planted. So your first and ring fingers stay planted where they are, and then he moves to the A chord by planting his second finger on the fourth string second fret, and that's kind of a difficult fretting to make, but that's what he does. Then whenever he moves to the B minor chord, another chord uh, or another movement here that's not really intuitive to me, he moves again his second finger down one string to the fifth string second fret, and that's his B minor chord. You're going to hit the fifth string and everything down. You don't want to hit this lowest E string for your B minor chord because that'll give it the tonality of the E minor chord that we've got to play later, and we want distinction between the B minor sound and the E minor sound. Um, one thing to note about this B minor chord that you're making, it's going to be real easy the way, to, the way that he frets this to want to uh, block out this D note right here with how you're fretting with your middle finger. Make sure that you fret on the fifth string in such a way that your fingers are arched up and you can get this D string, or this, uh, it's not a D string, but the fourth string ringing out there. All right, whenever he moves into the G chord, he usually moves with a pickup note that happens on the sixth string second fret and then pulls it up into the G. Um, so it would sound like. And that's how he makes the G chord. Um, your first and ring finger still pretty much staying planted down here and then your middle finger moving to the third fret to make the G sound. Occasionally what he'll also do, if you listen to him, sometimes he picks up his ring finger and you hear an open second string that's ringing there. Alright, finally your E minor chord. In order to make the E minor chord, it's the same as the B minor chord except for you add this lowest E sound. And that's going to be why it's important to try to make sure that you're precise with your picking so that you get the distinction between the, e, uh, the B minor chord and the E minor chord. Otherwise, they'll just sound the exact same because they're pretty much the same notes being fretted. It's just the inclusion or exclusion of this sixth string that changes the, the uh, tonality there. The rhythm, uh, the picking rhythm for this song can be all over the place, kind of, if you're not used to this style. Uh, he's using a pick in the YouTube uh, of him playing it live that I saw. Uh, on the album it's kind of difficult to tell. He There's a couple of different gu guitar parts all going. I'm sure that one of them he's probably finger picking, but it sounds to me like more often than not you've got the attack of a pick that's happening there and not just kind of the uh, warmness of fingers. So I'm using a pick here. 
Um, and again, the rhythm is kind of all over the place. Um, he tends to, every time that the chord changes, he'll pluck down to accentuate that note. Uh, so like, you know, the first note would be a D, you're plucking on the fourth string there. Whenever it goes to an A, it would pluck down to an A, to a B. It's kind of always plucking down and then following down with whatever's moving. But then after that, it's just kind of this lazy back and forth that's going on up and down. And sometimes he'll uh, accentuate up notes. You know, up notes, up picks. Um, that pickup note on the G is on an up note. So the picking is really a lot of interplay between appropriately placed downs and ups, which is uh, hard to demonstrate because it's so fluid in when it changes and whenever it doesn't. So that's something that you'll have to listen to and practice and try to get right. One thing that I can tell you about the picking is that he tends to uh, come back to these droning notes right here uh, at the end of every rotation. So on the, you know, if one rotation is a D, A, and B minor, on that last B minor, he's down here kind of picking intentionally these higher drone notes. So you can hear that happening there. Lastly, I'll go over the riff that Ryan Adams plays at the beginning of the song on the album, uh, and then I'll show a few other chord voicings that Ryan Adams will play that gets different tonalities out of the chords from time to time. So here's the opening riff. I'm going to play through the riff real slow and you can watch my fingers. I know that you can't see my picking hand. I don't know that my fingers are kind of fat and just crowding this fretboard, but hopefully you can see and make sense of this. Same thing here so that you can see my picking hand now. Lastly, just a bit about tonalities that Ryan Adams gets out of chords with the D chords. Sometimes he frets with his uh, middle finger onto the second fret of the high E string, and you hear that full third flushed out. Sometimes it's droning with an E. Sometimes on the G chord, um, Ryan Adams has got his ring finger planted down on the second string third fret with the high E string ringing. Sometimes he picks up his ring finger and lets that open second string ring with the highest first string and you get a sound like this. With the E minor chord, sometimes instead of playing the E minor like this, he'll actually add in the fourth string, uh, fourth fret right there and you get a sound like this. Sometimes on the B minor notes, he may fret the uh, second string third fret, and you get the sound that's like, or sometimes maybe that fret is up. So there are a lot of variations that Ryan Adams makes with his chords and what strings he chooses to leave open and ringing to get different voicings out of the chords um, that really gives a lot of, um, you know, different sounds to the same song every time that he plays it. So really, uh, it's never the same way twice 
those are just some ideas that you can fool around with uh, to get different sounds out of these same chords like Ryan Adams does.